I've gone and bought both the Universal Audio Vault 476P and the Solid State Logic SSL12 to see how they compare, see if there's any sound differences, compare the features, the build quality, the user experience, and just, you know, see which is best. My hope is that by the end of this, you'll know which is right for you, and in turn, I'm gonna keep the one that suits me best. Of course, I've timestamped everything in this video, so do just skip around to the bits that you wanna see. And I'm on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers, and it would really mean the world to me if you could click that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. It means the world to me, helps the channel, and I'm just very grateful. Thank you in advance. This video is unsponsored, but it is made possible by my Patreon backers. The way that works is any funds from Patreon go back into the channel, I buy gear, I review that gear, and then give the gear to my backers via a giveaway. If that appeals, you know, do check it out below. It's a brilliant way to support the channel and you get to win some cool stuff. So, you know, do check it out. Of course, as I mentioned, I uh, bought these two units with my own cash, so they are not for giveaway. <laughs> Um, however, I do have lots queued up to give away in future, so do check it out. Anyway, onwards. So digging into the features, and we'll start with inputs and outputs. And firstly, the 476P, and this has four in, four out, and unfortunately not expandable in any way. However, the SSL12 has four in and eight out, but those four in are expandable to 12 via the ADAT port. That's a clear win for the SSL12. And then moving on to audio to digital conversion, and the 476P has a respectable, modern, sensible 24-bit, 192kHz, and the SSL12 kind of trumps it again. It's got 32-bit, 192 kilohertz. So I, I've got to give another win to the SSL. Moving on to a weird one, and just looking at phantom power, the 476P has global phantom power. That's a bit strange. You can't just turn them on independently on the channels like you can on the SSL 12. So for some people, this is going to be a bit of an inconvenience, and it's not something you need to worry about with the SSL 12. Next, moving on to power options, and thankfully, both of these can be bus powered via USB, and I love that. It's so handy. Uh, I've never used the power adapters for either because, you know, I'm always somewhere, you know, using a proper computer and that kind of thing. And you can also use both of these with uh, Apple devices as well. So that's super handy as well. However, bear in mind, the 476P won't get the juice it requires from iPads and iPhones. Both units have two headphone outputs, but with a major difference, in that with the 476P, they're not independently addressable, meaning you couldn't send different monitor mixes to them. The SSL12, however, can using the SSL360 software. Next onto workflow and aesthetic, and this has to be completely subjective, but all I can offer is just my point of view, and you know what? I've been doing this for quite a long time now. I've been involved in some capacity in audio since I was around, I don't know, early teens, something like that. So um, hopefully I can offer something of value. Starting with the 476P, and it is subjectively simply beautiful. I love the design, the wooden accents, the paint job, the nice knobs, and the experience of using it is inspiring because of this. The only thing I don't love is that the XLR inputs are on the front of the unit and I prefer when they're at the rear so that I don't have cables dangling off the front of my desk and looking messy. The SSL12, however, is so form follows function. It's clean, efficient, perhaps clinical, and really gets out of your way to let you get on with capturing audio. I don't love the look and feel like I do with the Vault, but it makes so much sense. Plus the XLR inputs are on the rear. I have to also mention the SSL 360 software, which unlocks a load of functionality and is beautifully designed. As for the bells and whistles that you get with these, starting with the SSL 12, it has the 4K button, which adds the sound of the large 4000 series SSL consoles. Basically, it just adds a little volume, a bit of harmonic distortion, a little top end. Personally, I find it sounds a little on the gritty side, so it's not something that I would recommend 
you know, baking into your recordings because, you know, you wouldn't want to regret that. However, many of you, since I did my initial review of the SSL 12, has said how much they love the way this button sounds when recording synths. So it's not something I do that often. I'll take your word for it. Maybe that's useful. The 476P has two gimmicks. I mean, interesting extra features. The 76 compressor mode and the vintage preamp mode. The 76 compressor is a basic FET circuit compressor that's on every channel. Super cool, actually. Um, but you do just get the very, the most basic uh, settings. You don't get any kind of controls for them. And the vintage preamp mode adds a little bit of, I guess, sort of tube-like harmonic distortion and it's subtle. These 76 compressors, I actually quite like the sound of them. However, the vintage mode, I can't hear a huge difference. So like I said, it's subtle, but let me show you sound clips of all of the above from both units. So this is what the SSL 12 sounds like. I'm going straight in, just straight into the preamp, nothing going on. This microphone is the Warm Audio WA47 tube mic, which I reviewed previously. It's lovely. I definitely recommend checking that out. Let's switch the 4K button on now. I'm just going to do it here. And there we go. Now I'm in the same position, same distance. The 4K button is on. Usually it equates to some extra top end, but what, I don't know, what do you think? Personally, I don't bake this sound into my recordings because if I decide I don't like it, it's hard to remove. Anyway, moving on. And now I've kept everything the same except for switching over to the Vault 476P. Distance, the same. And this is without any of the kind of uh, bells and whistles in applied. Let's start by adding the uh, 610 tube kind of emulation circuit. So let's turn that on now. And there we go, that's on. I don't know uh, if I can really tell a huge difference, uh, not like with the 4K button with the SSL 12, where you notice a bit of a volume jump and more kind of top end. This I think is more subtle. And maybe that means, you know, you just, just leave it on. But anyway, I definitely now want to see what the compression sounds like. And I'm gonna switch uh, this uh, preamp emulation off and then I'll well, put them all together at the end. Let's do the compression now. Okay, and now that's with the compression and it is gonna be, it's gonna sound louder. And um, I tested this uh, briefly and I kinda liked it. Um, it's not as, it's not dialed into exactly how I would like it, but um, it's still potentially useful. I'm now going to switch on the preamp uh, emulation and just see what it sounds like all together. Let's do that. And there we go. That's everything together. Any good? Do you like it? Um, we'll see. I just wanted to touch briefly on value for money. And I would say that these two, whichever way you go, they are both pretty great value for money. I mean, think about what you get. All of those features 
packed into two relatively small boxes made by pretty highly regarded, you know, hardware producers. I don't know how you can complain. At this point in these videos, I would usually go on to pros and cons, but as this is a comparison video, I feel like I should do the biggest pros for each and then the biggest cons for each. Let's do it. Starting with the biggest pros and for the 476p, I would say the biggest pros are the build quality, the aesthetic, the way it's inspiring to use, the user experience. That compression does sound good and the software bundle you get with it is also pretty great. And the biggest pros for the SSL 12, that 32-bit obviously, that is such a big feature for this unit. You get expandable inputs using the ADAP port. This feature cannot be underestimated. I also love the workflow. It's so logical, it makes so much sense, and it really just gets out of your way whilst you want to create. And then the biggest cons, and the 476p, I would say it has limited IO. It feels like its capabilities are capped so as not to cannibalize the higher end universal audio range. And then the SSL 12, it does feel a little bit clinical to use. It's less inspiring subjectively, you know, the aesthetic for me. It does feel slightly cheaper feeling in terms of the build quality in comparison. Not bad just not as good. Now I just want to start gathering my thoughts on these two units and the 476p. My The big takeaway when I did my initial review of this, which you should check out as well, was that I had a, a kind of an uncomfortable feeling that, you know, with the knowledge that the performance has kind of been throttled for this unit and, you know, that's understandable to, so as not to cannibalize the higher end offerings, but that it the unit had been kind of dressed up and they, they, they kind of put a bow on it to sort of hide that fact. I completely understand that companies have to do this kind of thing. I get it. The problem I have with this is that the upgrade path from this unit, I think is a little confused. The next models up from the 476 being the Apollo Solo at around 400 pounds and Apollo Twin for around 800 pounds. They, of course, unlock the amazing UAD native software, but both only have two mic preamps. There's only one route for expanding ins and outs with these, and that's to keep buying more Apollo units. And there's no ADAP ports until you get up to the Apollo X6 rack interface, which will set you back around £2,000. This is smart on Universal Audio's part, but does require some consideration from the consumer. I'd say the upgrade path for the SSL 12 is a little bit more flexible. If you were to stick with SSL, they have the six at around a grand and the big six at around two grand. I realize these are a bit of a sideways step towards mini consoles, but they are cool. However, with the SSL 12's ADAP port, I feel like this might have consumers sticking with this unit for a little bit longer, which I like, and maybe pairing it with something like a Focusrite Claret plus Octopre 8 for around 650 pounds. If you shop around, you can get this combo that gives you 12 excellent preamps for under a grand? Is that legal? I do wonder whether SSL should make a proprietary unit for, you know, specifically for pairing with the SSL 12 to expand the inputs. That would be cool. Uh, you know, something that has a really similar sound, similar features. Just a thought. And on to my final verdict, and I should just say for some context, because someone's gonna say this, it, whichever one you go for, Whichever position you're in, whichever you decide to go for, you have made a good decision and you've got a great audio interface on your hands. However, I believe that the SSL 12 long term is the better choice here. And that is because it has two linchpin features, which I think really make it stand out. And the first being that you can record 32 bit. It's, it's a big deal. It really is. And the other one is the ADAP port, which, you know, as I said, means you can expand the inputs to 12. Also on a personal level, and going back to the 32-bit conversation, and I think that is more useful to more people than the compression is in the 476p. You know, that's mainly because with the compressor, it's you get so little in the way of settings and, um, you know, you can't really control how they work aside from those 
those three kind of presets. That's why I'm keeping the SSL 12 and I'm selling this, this beautiful thing. And you know, if you end up getting this, it's a hell of an interface, really is great. Um, and I'm gonna miss it, you know? But after all, this is a head over heart decision, as, as it should be. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. Do you agree? What did I miss? Definitely pop all your thoughts down below and I'm down there as much as possible, so let's chat. I've now made hundreds of videos about audio and video of which the algorithm tells you to watch this video next and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Thank you.